So people are making a killing in these airdrops that are happening on the Solano ecosystem. So what I wanna do today is just take a look at what actually happened, if you're actually too late, and the new projects that are coming up in the Solano ecosystem that you can get into right now. At the very end, we're also gonna take a look at uh, different DEXs across from Solana and Cardano and how they actually uh, compare as far as the different metrics. So this really all started uh, yesterday and we did a quick meetup over at the uh, San Juan Smokehouse here in Puerto Rico. And my friend Steven who owns uh, the uh, facility said, yeah, he goes, I'm doing pretty great. And he was talking about his, uh, his uh, bonk buys that he did a long time ago for Solana and of course Solana itself. And he talks about uh, this Jupiter airdrop. And he said, yeah, I was, you know, I, I was using the uh, decks and I got a nice little airdrop. And the good thing is, is that they're actually gonna go through and it's going to be more of the same. So Jupiter uh, itself is a DEX. It is a centralized exchange is built on Solana. It looks just like this. Pretty interesting because you can actually do DCA orders, limit orders, you can do bridges, perpetual to gen and earn. It's pretty funny. And uh, it's pretty you know, interesting. Like you can put in uh, a certain amount of Solana, just let it sit there on your wallet. And over uh, 28 or 30 days, you can have it you know, buy $20 of whatever is in the Solana ecosystem. But uh, just by using this and doing this, 40% uh, of Jupiter's 10 billion tokens were distributed as airdrops in four phases. So you missed the first one if you haven't gone already, and the, th and the other three are coming up. The first phase involves 1 billion tokens to users with a minimum of $1,000 swap volume. Now, I didn't get into it or didn't use Jupiter at that point, so I was not eligible. And you can actually check to see if you're eligible on this website, airdrop.jup.ag. I'll link that in the description, and you can see that I, uh, I uh, synced up my wallet and it says, no, sorry. Not in our first batch, but there's still three more rounds and we'll release more on that soon. So I'm like, what a pretty good incentive to actually do that. So because this one, Jito, and when he was talking, I could have, I, I got confused. Cause I'm like, what's the difference between Jupiter and Jito? Because it's not like the exact same thing. So Jupiter is a decentralized exchange and Jito itself is for liquid staking. So this is what happened uh, in the last uh, 24 hours. So Jito, I might be saying this wrong, I'm uh, sure. JTO soars hours into the airdrop. So Jito, a staking project built on Solana, released its JTO token at 11 a.m. Thursday by 11.45 a.m. Around 30% of the airdrop has been claimed and none of the top 14 claiming addresses by size had sold. Eligible recipients have 18 months to click their assets. That's quite a bit. And then also uh, the Coinbase and uh, Binance announced plans to list a token. So what does that mean? That means that that price ripped. And again, it's not, it's not even 48 hours old now, and it is ranked, uh, drum roll please, 146. <laughs> it is ranked 146. And uh, you have to ask yourself, why is it worth that much? Is it just because of speculation? Yeah, par partially, but we're gonna talk about why I think it's a pretty good platform. And uh, we can see here that there's, there is another, another factor there that the total supply is 1 billion and the circulating supply is 115 million. So it's uh, it's just a little bit over 10% of what it actually is. And we can see that the trading volume is uh, uh, quite high, $1.2 billion market cap, $376 million. And of course, right now it's worth $3.20 uh, initially. So that's pretty amazing. And then of course, there were stories like this, and this is debatable, this is actually real, I'm, who knows if it is. But uh, Emperor of Crypto says, thank you, Jito, for the generous airdrop of $150,000 I achieved from staking $390 across 15 wallets. Let me, let me say it again. This guy got $150,000 from staking $390 across 15 wallets. Same thing could be said for Uniswap. Remember when Uniswap came out and they did an airdrop and all you had to do is really pretty much use it and people just use a ton of different wallets? Could be the same thing here. But... Regardless, uh, you still have an opportunity uh, as, as time goes on for Jupiter. Jito, unfortunately, is closed, and that's, uh, that's a shame. But I will tell you, it looks like a pretty decent platform. So just so you know, uh, Jito, it's uh, MEV powered, and that stands for maximum extractable value. You can earn MEV rewards through liquid staking. So real quick, uh, liquid staking, is, is, it's kind of easy to think about. Uh, you know, you have Lido li liquid staking. Pretty much what you're doing is just saying, okay, look, here's one of my Solana. Take that and stake it. Okay, great. I'm going to give you whatever this token is. So like for like Lido, it's like staked Lido. I'm going to give you this staked Lido token, which is just corresponds to the one ETH that you put in. And you can do whatever you want with that, that staked ETH, that staked ETH token. But if you want this Ethereum, this one Ethereum back, 
You got to come back here and you got to give me that ST ETH. It's the same thing here with uh, liquid staking. You're going to stake this, this uh, uh, Solana. Great. I'm going to give you this token, which corresponds to the amount of, of, of uh, Solana that you've actually staked. If you want it back, you got to give me the same thing. Or if you want to spend it, do whatever you want to. I don't really care. So, of course, you have the liquid staking, so it becomes liquid. You can do whatever you want with it. And even though you're staking and you're getting the rewards on the staking, good news is you can actually use that token for whatever you want to do, whatever degenerate thing that you that you have planned. And then also for uh, the MEV part, which uh, maximum extractable value, essentially what they're doing is saying like, look, we'll, we will stake it for you and then we'll do all this work in the, in the, on the sidelines. And whatever we other kind of, any kind of other token, if we work with other, any other kind of decks, we could get you some other type of crypto, maybe an NFT, maybe a discount, a maximum extractable value. So you're gonna get like a twofer. So one, you get uh, the liquid staking, and the second part is you get the maximum extractable value. So they're doing both in one uh, sitting right here uh, on Gito. So for this one, the question I have is, well, how do I do that? Because not a lot of people are really well versed in this. Me personally, I don't really do a lot of this. But the first thing you're going to need for this, you're going to need to connect your wallet. There's two different wallets it's really going to take that I can see that unless we want to get deep in the weeds, is you got a phantom wallet, which you can download here. I will link that in the description. Or you can use your ledger and uh, connect it to your MetaMask wallet, which is a browser-based wallet. One thing I like about those is that you can lock your MetaMask wallet with your ledger device. That's one of the beauties of ledger. And again, if you want to take a look at that link's description. But you might ask yourself, like, okay, so that's going on and I can actually do that. So what would that look like with actually uh, staking? I will tell you how this works. But the thing you're probably asking yourself is this. If you're not really well-versed in it, how do I get... So if I have this, this wallet here, this uh, phantom wallet, or I have my ledger, how do I get the Solana onto that wallet so then I can put it over here? Because it's, it's actually two steps. You can't just go from a centralized exchange and put it on this uh, decentralized, uh, essentially staking platform. So you're gonna, have to, you're gonna have to buy it on some exchange, money that you have fiat, give it to the centralized exchange, give me my Solana, whatever you wanna buy, Solana in this case, you take the Solana, it's sitting on the exchange, then you gotta put it into this wallet, and then you gotta connect it, and you gotta do all those things. If that's too confusing, I gotcha. There's a great website, Dan Teaches Crypto. I'm very biased because I created it, obviously. It's 100% free, it'll always be free. No, I don't even spam you, I just send you emails if I do an upload of a new video. If you go to module two under safety, and I click on that, and it'll just go like, there's just some basic uh, information here, but one of the things that talks about what's a crypto wallet, I talk about a tangent wallet, and down here I talk about a ledger and how to do it. I show you how you can use something like a tangent, which is my favorite, or a ledger to actually take the crypto from a centralized exchange and put on this wallet and go up. I'm telling you right now, if you're confused, get the tangent and just watch the video and I explain exactly why. So anyhow, let's just do this real quick. I'm gonna show you how easy this is. So I have my Solana, it's in this phantom wallet, right? And I'll let's just say that everything's connected already. So let's just say I want to go, let's just put in one Solana, right? And for that, they're going to give me this Gito Soul of 0 0.93. And that is, of course, what I'm going to put it back for the liquid staking. I'm going to deposit that Soul. And I want to show you the, the transaction fees. I'm going to have to splice this in because you can't see it. But it's uh, one Solana. You get uh, Gito Stake Soul, 0 0.93. And the network free is fee is 0 0.00001 Soul. That's like a fraction of a penny. And I can just confirm that. Let's see how long it takes. One, two, okay, it took less than a second. Great, so then of course, if I, let me take a look at my wallet itself, and then I'll have to splice this in so you can see it. But uh, yeah, yeah, there it is, Cheeto Stakes Home. <laughs> that was very fast. That was less than a second. So yeah, not too shabby. And then uh, for that one, then, so the question then becomes, okay, well, I have this 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 JTO uh, token, you know, and that's great, Cheeto, and it's up, and it's, you know, massively uh, appreciating. What does it do? What's the whole point of that thing? Well, here's the thing about it. The JTO, well, first of all, I just wanted to, to clarify about the airdrop. Airdrop is backwards looking and the snapshot for eligible activity was taken on November 25th, 2023. As part of this, the points campaign is closed and points will no longer be updated. So you missed out on this one, but don't worry, I got four or five that you can get into. So what is JTO? JTO is the name of the JTO governance token. And if you click on, I'll link this in the description. This is the actual website. You click on governance over here and click on governance itself. It'll take you to this website. And because it's so new, this is where they're going to be able to actually vote. So you actually have uh, the JTO in your wallet. I don't have any because I wasn't a part of the airdrop. 
not that I'm bitter. And uh, I can see here that like, here's the different provisions that are coming on the table to vote, remove a council member, add a council member, set an upgrade authority and blah, blah, blah. And of course, that's where they'll do all the voting. And that's where you can be part of uh, this whole decentralized process and come together and vote and uh, make, uh, make GDO great again, I guess. So that is exactly essentially what it does. And then here's the, the whole crux of it, because I talked about, and I'm talking pretty fast, I'm sorry, but on this part here about JDO, JDO, the question is, is like, why is everybody doing it? Because, you know, that was nice that it has liquid staking as uh, the maximum extractable value. That's cool. But can everybody do that? Well, it seems like you can, but there's some problems. And there's also some problems with Solana. So solving the MV, MEV problem on Solana, a guide for stakers. Here's what it really comes down to this. And it just talks about bots and the things that are going on in the background. We know that happens. Yes, it's true. And this is actually from the JDO network. Over the last seven days, arbitrage transactions from bots comprise more than 30% of transactions. Now, everybody who hates Solana is dancing in the streets right now going, I knew it, bots. Well, here's the whole thing with the bots. The bots are doing all these things because they're trying to farm this maximum extractable value. They're trying to get their transaction in early or a little bit late or in the right sweet spot to get that, whatever value that is, whatever those tokens are, those NFTs, to get them in so they can be part of the whole process and say, hey, we're the best thing. That's the whole point of the bots. And that's a problem because it's really screwing things up. How much time are validators wasting processing failed MEV transactions? Well, because of all these bots, Solana validators are wasting more than 58% of their time processing failed arbitrages. Without intervention, we anticipate the amount of wasted block space will only get worse in 2023. This was written months ago. As a staker, you have the opportunity to stake to validators that uphold the values you want to see in a blockchain. And of course, they do it by running the newest version, contributing to the ecosystem, low commission, high uptime, run in uh, low stake regions and data center providers. Gito Solana is a fork of the Solana Labs validator, optimized for efficient MEV extraction. So that's that part. And when I was reading that, I'm like, okay, that makes a lot of sense because when we've been talking about this before, there's a one uh, different uh, transactions that we, we pull up in this different on-chain data. And it looks like this. This is from SoulScan. I'll link this in the description. See this thing right here where it says transactions per second and success rate? Looks pretty sweet, right? 99.89, 99.99. And of course, I think every chain has like a 0, 0.0 something issue. I'm not going to say it. But Solana is much worse. I go from seven days to a month. You start to see like, yeah, it's still pretty good, actually. Well, how about three months? Okay, now we're seeing a picture of something a little bit different. This is on October 5th, 2023. The success rate went from the high 99s, 98.999, down to 95, dropped to 90%, 89, 88. Let's even take it further. Let's take a look at all time. And you can see Solana has quite at the issue, right? With the transaction per second and success rate, 68% success rate on March 13th, 2023. That's an issue. And then of course, we come down here we take a look at, where are we? Success vote versus non-vote transactions. All these different, these non-vote transactions, it's still in the millions, but look at these vote transactions. That's a lot. That could be the bots that we're talking about, the different transactions that are happening. So the, so the thing that we take a look at is this. What Gita was talking about was an issue with Solana. And I must say, Solana's looking much better, but this is fairly recent, if I'm not mistaken. If we're looking at this, it's looking like uh, October and we've had a good run. Does that mean it can continue? Eh, potentially. I'm not gonna say anything's perfect because it's not. So it's just something to watch out for. But I gotta tell you, you have to understand, I'm very biased. I own a Solana. And the next thing we're gonna talk about, I own a lot of it too. And that is actually called Cardano. And before we get into the Cardano piece, I will just put this in, in the link in the description. I did tease that there was uh, these different uh, products or different uh, platforms you can get into for the farming, just like you saw with Jupiter, just like you saw with uh, with Gito. Uh, you can see that this is from Ansem. Next round of most likely Solana airdrops. Margin by Tensor, Camino, Parcel, Meteora, Drifts, Zeta, uh, Jupiter Exchanges, because it's got four more or three more. And of course, there's one from Gumshoe, and he lays it all out as well. I'm going to link both of those, uh, their Twitter accounts with this specific tweet. So you can do all the different farming that you want to do and maybe run things through there. But again, this is extremely risky. That's the Solana piece. Now, Cardano. So, Snake, Snake, whatever, however you say it. Uh, this was one of those projects that uh, has really taken off. 
lately. And the last 24 hours, we're up 27%. Last 30 days, 313%. That's pretty darn good, right? And right now, it's not even ranked. It's uh, one of those low cappers. So the fully diluted valuation is 77 million and 327,000. And I get interested in these meme coins, especially as uh, we start to get into this, this bull run because you get to these degen plays. Let's be honest, that's what it is. And we were talking yesterday about Bonk. Bonk uh, was, was introduced to me like when I was in the 170s, 150s. And I said, this is, gonna, this is a meme coin, kind of like Dogecoin, but built on Solana. And I said, this will be a top 100 coin easily. And that was, uh, again, 170, 150. Now we're sitting at uh, rank number 80. And over 30 days, it's almost at 1,000%. Not bad for 30 days. So with Snack, I was like, hey, I'm going to get my hands on some of that. And that led me to the question, which was this. What's the best Cardano DEXs to buy Snack? Ask, or Snake? Asking for a friend. And everybody had some great piece of advice. And then uh, someone said, Dex Hunter. You got to go to Dex Hunter or Tap Tools, which will lead you to that one. and uh, Or NAMI, or not NAMI. Uh, uh, Mim swap, min swap, excuse me. So I said, okay, great. So Patricia said, go to tap tools first, but you go to Dex Hunter. So Dex Hunter is an aggregator, it finds the lowest prices. And when I did that, I put it through, very easy to do. I use uh, the NAMI wallet for Cardano. And uh, again, if you want to learn all about that, go to the Dan Teaches Crypto. And when I did this, I said, hey, is this normal? Because uh, when I'm doing this, it's a little bit odd. I've got, uh, it was taking you know, 10 minutes, then 20 minutes. And I was like, uh, what's happening here? Right here, I did a screenshot of six minutes and five minutes. And I did, uh, excuse me, five minutes, oh, that's six months ago. Five minutes ago, yeah, 40 seconds, 30 seconds. They should really just differentiate between six months because I bought Banker a long time ago. Anyhow, so I put 28 in and 5 8 in. And it just took a long time. I think about 20 minutes or so to go through on a DEX. And I thought that was very uh, odd. Uh, so I put it out in the tweet and I said, Hey, is this normal? And I got a bunch of answers and, um, the Dex hunter said, Hey, it's up to the Dex to process the transactions. When I place them, we're an aggregator. So just finding you the best deals and running ac across Dexes accordingly. And that's true. That's what they do. And they did a great job. And I said, yeah, I get it. There's some slowdown in the Dexes. And then uh, a lot of people were saying, ah, Rob, why are you doing it so low? You should, you know, you know, or just five ADA. And I said, hey, I only do these on, I do test transactions. I'm not going to put in 10,000 Cardano on something that may not go through test transactions, man. You got to do those first. And that's on everything. So we did that, took a little bit more time, it actually went through. And then some people say, we well, got to adjust the slippage. You got to do this. You got to do that. Fine, whatever. And then for this one, it went through. So yeah, I'm happy. And then uh, if you can see right here that they found the cheapest one, which was actually MinSwap. So I actually went through MinSwap to take a look at it. And I was like, well, let me try it over here. I'm going to do this right now. And let's see how long it takes. I'm not so concerned with the time frame because everything gets bogged down, right? We can agree to that. People get, there's a lot of transactions going on. Things kind of slow down. I'm not going to fault anybody for that. I will say, and I've talked about this before, two or three weeks ago. See this batcher fee? This is a fee paid for the service of off-chain laminar batcher to process, process transaction. It's two ADA. Right now, that's uh, about a buck because eight is around 49, 50 cents, somewhere around there. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, well, it's a dollar, but that's a heck of a lot more than the 0 0.00001 Solana. And I thought to myself, what if we go to the all time high and we're going to ADA? Well, that's six bucks. Now, of course, they can go down, but I mean, in all honesty, that's, uh, that's something. Now, if we take like the liquidity provider fee, 0 0.084 ADA, not bad. But the batcher fee, we'll see if that goes away at some point. And the deposit ADA, I understand it's a uh, UTXO, so unspent transaction transaction output, gotcha. So you got to put it there, but you get it back, whatever. Uh, let's try this right now because some people are saying, well, Rob, you got to go over 20 because it makes it quicker. Let me just put this in. Let's put in 23. I don't know. And swap. Let's see. So 14,400. Everything looks pretty good. Batcher fee, two way to deposit. Yeah, route. Eight to confirm swap. And this is a NAMI. I don't know if you can see this. I'm just going to click on sign, my password, and done. So let's see. And your process has been, your transaction has been processed successfully. Close. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to open up my NAMI wallet and take a look. Not there yet. So, all right. Not as uh, immediate as I'd like to be. But again, things get slow, right? Uh, just one of those things that happens. And uh, maybe it'll, show up in a little bit.
but uh, not right now that I can see. No, I don't see it. And uh, now I'm coming over here and uh, still in queue. So sure, a little bit, uh, a little congested, no big deal. Now I want to go over here to Orca. I don't know if you've seen Orca, another decentralized exchange. It's built on Solana. And this is the one that I use a lot of. And let's just do this. Let's see, buy Pith with, I don't know. We'll just put in one Solana. Because my wallet is, is already uh, connected. And this is going to go down. Let me click on buy, approving. And this thing's going to come up. Uh, network fee, 0.007. I'll still go for it. All right. And yeah, there it is. So done. All right. So uh, that looks like it uh, did pretty well. Uh, not too bad. And then I, so I will say this before we, we, we finish out, you, you, you have to understand like, again, these things get congested, but you really have to take a look at the data. So how congested is it? And there's a website, it's called DeFi Llama. If you go to defilama.com forward slash DEXs underneath volume and overview, let's take a look what the volume has been over seven days because maybe it's just a lot of volume. So if we separate this, we can go high to low. And so now we got Uniswap in the last seven days did 10.2 billion, Pancake 2.6, Third Chain 1.3, wow. And Orca, the one we just used, is 1.14 billion. Uh, let's take a look at MinSwap. Uh, And here we are, MinSwap, number 46. And they did 34.71 million. Interesting. And the last uh, 24 hours, they did 8.85 million. All right. And the one that we just used, Orca, uh, did 364 million. So um, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, looks like there's a lot of, those are the transactions. That's it for today. So look. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive, but that's it for today. I want to say thanks so much for stopping by. Do appreciate it, and I'll see you on the next one.